Okay, so we're going to go over the uh, last problem from your homework assignment. This is the last problem, or this is the longest problem, and it asked the most of you. So it asked you to figure out what the claims were that we're deducing, the rules of deduction that we were using, and in one case it asked for the line citation. I've gone ahead and filled in the line citation because I give you that on the exam. Also on the exam, I'm giving you all of the claims that you can deduce. So I'm filling in all of this stuff, and I filled in all of this stuff, all you have to do is give me the rules of deduction. So hopefully this video will answer any questions that you have, but if it doesn't, go ahead and send me an email, let me know so we can work it through and, uh, and figure it out together. Okay, so we're gonna start with, um, with this proof. There's four premises. The first premise is, if not P, then R or S. The second premise is not S or Q or T. The third premise is, if not T, then not R. And our last premise is not Q and not T. And from this, we can deduce the conclusion P. So it takes a lot of steps to get there from the premises to the conclusion. So uh, let's get started. So in line five, <coughs> we have not T. And our line citation is just line four. So line four gives us not Q and not T. And we're saying that somehow we can derive or deduce not t from this alone. Okay, so what rule gives us a conjunction claim and tells us that from any conjunction claim, you can assert one of its conjuncts by itself? That's the rule simplification. So simplification tells us if we have something like p and q, then we can just say P. If I tell you my name is Rebecca and I'm from North Carolina, then I can also just say my name is Rebecca. If these two things are true, then we know that each one of the things is true on its own. All right. <coughs> so that was our first one. Our second um, sub-premise, line six, says not R. And it says that we can get not R from the information in lines 3 and 5. So line 3 says, if not T, then not R. And line 5 said, not T. And we're saying that from this, we can deduce not R. Okay, so what we have here is a conditional claim uh, in the first line. The second line, we have <coughs> the antecedent of that conditional claim. And what we're saying we can deduce from that is the consequent of that conditional claim. So what rule tells us that if we have a conditional claim, such as if P then Q, and we have the antecedent, which in that case would be P, that we can automatically deduce the consequent, in this case, Q. That's modus ponens. We know modus ponens. We've had a video on it. Um, we've talked about it in a couple contexts. In this case, it's just modus ponens. It looks a little different because we've got different variables and we have some negation going on, but it's just simple modus ponens. We have a conditional claim, we have the antecedent, so we know we've also got the consequent. Okay, so next we have line seven. Um, we have not Q or T, <coughs> and we say we can get that just from the information in line four. So line four tells us not Q and not T, and we are saying that we can derive from that, not Q or T. Okay, so what rule of deduction tells us that if we have two, a conjunction claim where both of the conjuncts are negated, that we can then infer a disjunction claim where the whole claim is negated? That's to Morgan's laws. So again, the variables are different, but the pattern of reasoning is the same. So I think in your book they say De Morgan's Laws as not A and not B is logically equivalent to <coughs> not A or B. They use different variables, but it's the same thing. Okay, so that's just one of De Morgan's laws. We had that whole video on that too, so you can check that out if that's confusing or if you don't know why those things are logically equivalent. All right, so now we have line eight. Here we don't have 
the claim that we're trying to deduce, nor do we have the rule, but we do have the lines that we're citing. So let's go ahead and get the lines up on here. Um, we're going to isolate them so we can see them a little bit more clearly <coughs> and figure out what can we deduce from the information in these lines. So line 2 has <coughs> not S or Q or T, and line 7 has not Q or T. All right, what can we deduce here? Okay, so in our first line, we want to look at what our primary logical operator is. That is a disjunction. So we know that we have a disjunction claim here. <coughs> so it's a disjunction just like something like P or Q. And in our second line, we have one of the disjuncts negated. So that would be like saying we have P or Q and not Q. Because here we have not S or Q or T and not Q or T. <coughs> so here's our simplified version of this. What does this look like in the book? What rule of deduction does this look like? This looks like disjunctive argument. And what does this disjunctive argument tell us that we could infer in this situation? It says that we could infer P. So if we're looking at our simplified version, what it says is that if you have a disjunction claim and one of the disjuncts is false, then the other disjunct has to be true. If I tell you that it's Monday or it's Tuesday and it's not Tuesday, then it has to be Monday, right? One of them has to be true. So if this one is false, then this one has to be true. <coughs> okay, so we're gonna come back over here to our less simplified version to make sense of this. I'm not going to erase it, that's it. Okay, so here we have not S is one disjunct, and Q or T is another disjunct. So in this line, which is not Q or T, we're saying that this disjunct, this whole thing is negated, which means that this disjunct here, which the whole disjunct itself is not S. So this whole disjunct, not S, has to be true. So we know that we, if this disjunct is false, then this one has to be true, and that whole disjunct is not S. Okay, so <coughs> we know that with this information, we can deduce that not S is the case. And we can do that again with disjunctive argument. Okay, so now we have not S <coughs> with disjunctive argument. <coughs> Sorry. All right, so in our next, um, our next claim that we can deduce is not R and not S. And the lines that we're citing are 6 and 8. So line 6 says not R. And line 8 says not S. And we're saying that we can deduce from this not R and not S. So basically we've got one claim, and we've got another claim that we're asserting, and we're deducing that we, can that we can assert both of those claims together. Okay, so we're saying if not R is true and not S is true, then not R and not S is true. If it's true that my name is Rebecca, and it's true that I live in North Carolina, then it's true that my name is Rebecca and I live in North Carolina. It's as simple as that. <coughs> okay. So this would be like saying, if we know that P is Q, and we know that true, Q is true, then we know that P and Q is true. What's that rule? That rule is just conjunction. We're just creating a conjunction claim between two things that we already know are true. Okay, moving on to the next one. This is line 10. We don't have, um, so we don't have the claim, we don't have the rule, but we do have one line. So uh, only one line, let's write that in, is line 9. So we know that we're doing something with not R and not S. Okay, so here we have a conjunction where both of the conjuncts are negated. So is there any rule that tells us that we can infer something from not just a conjunction claim, but specifically a conjunction claim where both of the conjuncts are negated. That would look something like 
not A, and not B. We can use De Morgan's laws to infer then the negation of a whole disjunction with those two claims. So if we have not R and not S as a conjunction, then we can infer not R or S as the disjunction. Um, just like with our simplified phrase here, we would infer not A or B. So again, that is <coughs> De Morgan's laws. And what we inferred was um, not R or S. All right, so we're getting close. So 11, this says that we get not not P from something in lines 1 and 10. Okay, so line 1 says if not P, then <coughs> R or S. And line 10 said not. R or S, and we're saying that we're going to get not, not, P from here. So what's the rule that lets us do this? Okay, so again, here we've got um, just a conditional claim with the negated consequent. Uh, so again, we just have a conditional claim <coughs> like we did um, up here in line 6 when we were dealing with uh, the information from lines 3 and 5. Except this time we have a negated consequent in our uh, in our second claim that we're looking at. So that would be something like we had if p then q and not q. And then we're saying that from that we can infer the negated antecedent. Our antecedent was not p <coughs> in the original one, so we're um, we're saying that we can deduce not not p. In our simplified version, our antecedent is just P, so it's just regular conditional, so we can uh, deduce not P. Okay, so here we have uh, everything that we're working with in the actual proof, and we have our simplified version. So let's compare the simplified version to the book. What does this look like? It's modus tollens, which we've also talked quite a bit about. And we have um, on a video, so if you're confused about modus tollens, you can go ahead and revisit that video. But again, we just had a conditional claim. We had the negated consequent, so we knew that we could deduce the negated antecedent. That's just modus tollens. All right, so let's go to our last one. We know that we're going to deduce P from something, and we're going to do it from whatever we have in line 11. We just did line 11. That was not, not P. So basically we're saying here we have a claim that is negated twice, or a double negation, you might say. And from that claim, <coughs> we can deduce the plain claim itself, unnegated, completely unnegated. So if you have something that's double negated, you can deduce the claim on its own. What rule looks like this in your textbook? Double negation. All right, so this is... Plain old double negation. If you have two negation signs, they cancel each other out. You just get the plain old claim by itself. All right, so now we're at P, and check it out. That is our conclusion. So we can discharge it, put it over here, and we're done. We did the whole proof. So we got um, all of our rules of deduction, and we even filled in a few of the claims that we were deducing along the way. So hopefully this makes more sense to you. You have the answers. We've worked through it together. We walked through it. Um, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. And good luck on your exam. If you have questions on the exam, please get in touch with me. Don't just sit there frustrated or submit a question that you're feeling really shaky about. Um, just like pause the test and hit me up and I'm happy to help you. So good luck and hopefully I will hear from some of you soon.